Today we're going to talk about business memos. We're going to talk about why we send a business memo. We're going to learn about text cases, alignment, line spacing, and paragraph spacing. And believe it or not, you'll use this in graphic design all the time. We'll learn about the basic format of a business memo and how we can check our spacing in the memo and even how we sign a business memo. So what are cases of text? You know, we're not talking about putting letters in a case. So I've gone into Word, and one thing I've taught you is to type everything and then go back and format it. Um, Word defaults to something called sentence case, where it just capitalizes the beginning of each line automatically, even if I don't want it to. Now I can change my cases in a couple places. Um, if I highlight this all caps and I come up here to my change case button, I can turn around and make it all caps or it calls it uppercase. Now this is already in title case, but you can see that title case is the beginning of, of each. Now official title case um, doesn't um, is the capitalize. The true title case, uh, which is what we use in blog posts, um, usually doesn't capitalize essential articles and things like that. So V and 2 would be uh, lowercase. And you kind of usually have to do that manually. Now if I wanted to make it lowercase, um, I can go to lowercase. And see toggle case is different. It's kind of the opposite. And I don't really know when you would use that. Sentence case is what it defaults to where it capitalizes the beginning of each sentence for you. Now there's also this other kind of capitalization that's not shown called small caps. And sometimes we use that. If I hit small, if I hit my little jump arrow right there for font, I can come here and I can go to small caps. You can also see there's something called strike through, which is where you strike through, double strike through. Lawyers typically will use that. Um, and all caps is there too. But I'm going to do small caps and say OK. And I can see that here um, that the S is kind of capitalized. Now if I go and I press shift when I capitalize my C, then you'll kind of see that it is uh, capitalized there as well. And so when I say something is all caps, it's just all capital letters. And you can use your caps lock and make sure it's all capitalized that way. Or you can highlight it and format it uh, up here at the top. Alignment is an important part of what we do. And a lot of people just try to do everything center aligned. Um, center alignment is actually very weak alignment, as you can see here. Um, our eyes really like stronger alignment. Now here we have left and right alignment used on the same place. And we'll learn more about these design principles later. So let's talk about justification or alignment, as we just said. Now when you type things in Word, it's just going to left justify everything. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a jagged edge on the right of these paragraphs. And it just aligns it as you wish. So left justify, we don't have to do anything to do left justify. But we can see right here that our align left button has been clicked. And you can see the hotkey, which is control L, which does our alignment. Now, alignment for right is actually right here, or control R if you're typing along and you can figure out how to use those hotkeys. And it's right aligned. And you can see that if I type a little bit longer, an example, see how it's right aligned, but it's not left aligned? Now, center aligned is center right there. And you can see how uh, if I type a little bit more, um, it is going to not, uh, it's going to not be left or right. It's just center. Now full justified is a little bit different and it's not a great one to use. It's this one right here and it's full justify. And you can see what it does. It aligns it on the left and the right, but it can slow down your reading speed because you can see the spacing in between. These are a little bit different. We don't usually use it. Sometimes it's used in books, but typically not in school. So let's talk about line spacing and paragraph spacing, and they're two different things. Line spacing is spacing between these individual lines. Paragraph spacing is in between paragraphs. Now the first trick is if you want to change your line space of your paragraph space, and you've already typed the whole thing, and everything is going to apply to the whole document, I always do control A, just so every single line is highlight it. You can also do like this, but sometimes it's real easy to leave off the bottom line. So I'm going to do Control A because I'm formatting it all. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. Now, if I'm going to do line spacing, I'm going to go right here to the line spacing uh, button. And I can do single space, a little bit more than single space, 
one and a half space. 2.0 is double space, two and a half or three. And I can even do other options. Now, typically, one is what we're going to do from our memos. Uh, so we're going to leave, we're going to make sure that is at one. Now, we can do before and after paragraphs a couple different ways, but I like to just click on paragraph settings. The one thing I don't like about how Microsoft Word formats things is it automatically puts eight points or a little extra space after the paragraphs. And I kind of like to do that myself and control it myself. Maybe it's because of the typewriting days. Um, I can just do the down arrow and take it down to zero. Um, you can also control your line spacing here and do some really kind of fancy things here that maybe graphic designers might do. But I'm going to set my spacing after to zero for memos and say OK. And then you can see that there's not a lot of space here, but I can still press double space and make that spacing happen myself if I want to, uh, particularly in memos, which is what we'll be doing. So you can do memos from scratch, but I'm going to do a new blank document and kind of show you how I set this up. I'm going to do control A just to make sure I've got everything selected. I'm going to go to page layout. I'm going to set my margins and usually I'll do the custom margins and the margins for the top are two inches and one inch all the way around. Now, you can also see in page layout, the spacing thing we used earlier is right here. So I can set it to be zero here, or I can hit the paragraph spacing button, set it to be zero here, and I'm also gonna set my line spacing to single as well. So now I am ready to type my memo. Um, you do can, you can set your font. I'm gonna go with a traditional Times New Roman. If you're communicating with people from the older generation, they may think that you need to do that. Um, so I'm gonna type memo press enter twice. Two is in caps, colon, not semicolon. And I'm going to press tab twice. And this is going to be two awesome student. I'm going to pretend like that's their name. Press enter twice from Vicki Davis. I had to press enter twice for that. Um, and you know what? <laughs> I forgot my date. Date. And it is November 4th, 2014. You can do the slashes and that sort of thing. And we'll come here to the bottom, press enter twice, and I'm going to say, subject, how amazing that you are. And then I'm going to press enter twice, and I'm going to start doing my paragraphs and typing. I will not indent, I'll just type my paragraphs here um, to type my memo. Now, at the bottom, um, after I have all my paragraphs and I'm double spacing between paragraphs, Sometimes you'll see some notations. Um, typically, if the, the typist of it, let's pretend that somebody else typed it, um, that Katie typed it for me, and that person will just put that in lowercase. Now, if um, you have an enclosure, sometimes you'll have somebody put an enclosure, and that just means something's attached. Or you might see the word attached at the bottom. So let's review a little bit about our memo header. It could say memo or memorandum. It should be in all caps. We have our two from, day, and subject in all caps, and we want them aligned, and you're going to do that with tab. You could do it with spaces, but it's really hard to do. Um, you're going to space twice and double space and start your memo, and there's double space between all memo parts, even paragraphs. And typically, it's in just one font type. OK, so now do we check our spacing. Um, this is where the paragraph comes in. I know we've talked about it before, but I'm going to hit the paragraph button. This shows where we have paragraphs. Now you can see, oops, I needed to have double space. And I'm going to back up right there. Double space means one, two. That's two spaces right there before the next line. So that's double space. I just fixed that. But look here, I should have one space between each sentence. And you can see here I have a tiny little dot. And tiny little dots between the word. I'm actually going to back up so I only have one tiny little dot in there in the middle. Don't worry if I print this. Um, it will, um, these are unprinting marks. So they're not going to show up. One thing I do want to point out is see here, I have two tabs here, two tabs here, and only one there and one there. The point is, is this line up? So now I've printed and signed my memo. You're going to notice typically blue is kind of a, a good color for memo signing just because in this day of being able to easily copy things, it just gives you a little bit of protection against uh, somebody falsifying information, although if they really want to, they could. 
Um, typically, memos are a little bit more informal because they're to people within your own company. So initials uh, are used by some people or even first names, and we typically sign it up here at the top, uh, right above the from, right above our name is typically where most people sign those just to say, hey, it's really me that sent this memo. It just helps people feel confident that it's yours. Some people like to use the templates in Microsoft Word and use the formatting. Um, it just depends upon your office environment. We're going to be typing ours by hand, but you can use templates uh, in some cases. Good luck. We've covered a lot today about business memos, but also how we um, have different text cases, how we align, how we space things and paragraph space things. And then we've also covered formatting a business memo, how to check the business memo, and how to sign it. So you're ready to do your own. Good luck.